Hey nurses, Nurse Rooms here and welcome to my channel. I am a hemodialysis nurse here in the Philippines, a certified one. I am also a USRN holder with a pending job in the Vita. I've been in the field for seven years now. Currently, I am a dialysis nurse reliever after experiencing being a dialysis head nurse, officer in charge, regular staff nurse, oriente, enrolled dialysis trainee, and of course, being a clueless, newly registered nurse. My love for hemodialysis has made my job so much easier that even up to this point, I still find it enjoyable and rewarding. With Valentine's just around the corner, instead of focusing on flowers and chocolates, how about we focus on embarking on a love affair with our career? And today's video is gonna be a long, boring dialysis love story. I'm gonna trace back all the way from the day I met my love at first sight, why I chose hemodialysis, and why you should become one too. The dating process, which is the hemodialysis training, and finally becoming official as a certified nephrology nurse. Why I chose dialysis. My first few experiences took place in the emergency department. Yes, the action was there, everyone seems to see me as joy, a steak, but as a newly registered nurse, I just want to start from the bottom and learn the basic nursing skills, so I transferred to a ward. However, as I got the hang of all the procedures, everything just became a routine. So I was again in search for something mid-action pack, but still in a special area that wouldn't bore me in the long run. Then I learned about hemodialysis. You'll just know that you are in the right place when there isn't a day that you feel undecided despite all the toxicity that you're experiencing. It's just all about pure passion, excitement, and great interest that fuels you to learn more. In addition, working in a special area like nephrology gives you a whole lot of control when it comes to knowledge and skills, thereby giving you confidence when serving patients. There's a whole lot of diseases and a whole lot more of treatments for each of those and I don't like that. And like in nephrology, I just have to deal with acute and chronic diseases and anything around it. I've done both inpatient and outpatient dialysis and even in this narrowed branch of knowledge, there are still a bunch of areas to deal with. So for those who are anxious of getting stuck with dialysis and kidneys only, you can always choose inpatient and acute dialysis to see it for yourselves. When choosing a specific area to work or specialize, there are a lot of things to consider. And I get four for dialysis. First, toxicity. Are you tough enough to deal with it in the long run? Second, work environment. Are you a team player or you work alone? Third, Flexibility, are you up working long hours? And fifth, stability, is it capable to give you a good life? Let's find out if you should become one. In dialysis, there are two options. You can either work in a dialysis center or in a hospital setting. I'll be repeating this more often as I walk you through of the four considerations that I've just mentioned. First, toxicity. You should become a dialysis nurse because you get to choose an area that is less toxic or a more challenging one. And it's pretty obvious that dialysis center is less toxic than in a hospital setting. In a dialysis center, you only cater stable dialysis patients due to the fact that the facility is not complete with the needed equipments for emergency cases. But it is capable enough to deal with basic emergencies. Can you get what I mean? It means you don't admit unstable patients to a dialysis center, such as those who have low O2 saturation that may need intubation or those who may need hospitalization post HD. But for patients who are experiencing intradialytic complications, then of course the center is capable because there is a standby physician on duty. In a hospital setting, the sky is the limit. So if you have that kind of enthusiasm to learn more, then this is perfect for you. In my experience, I've done three code blues in an eight hour shift. I've witnessed dialyzing a patient with an open heart. And the worst complication that I've seen was a patient passing out with more than 200 systolic blood pressure with 
8 minutes remaining time and went straight to becoming a pundit. I'm not scaring you but don't even try underestimating the Alice's. Second, work environment. Unfortunately, working as a nurse requires you communication in any area. That is why you should become a dialysis nurse because this area helps you sharpen this skill. It comprises a team and you'd be surprised as to the number of people you get to deal and interact with. So if you are more of an introvert, then this is the best time to work out with your communication skills. In my case, I am not. So I always have a small piece of paper with a script every time I need to relay something. May it be to a doctor, watcher, or anyone. I am just not spontaneous. But at least in the long run, I was able to overcome it. You most likely interact in a daily basis with a nephrologist. With a physician on duty when nephrologist is not around, with a vascular surgeon when there are problems with the axis or you need to do first cannulation, with a social worker or kidney organizations, well, not entirely, you just have to familiarize with their protocols and the different organizations like PCSO, DSWD, and etc. With a clerk because of the annual field health dialysis sessions, with a billing personnel because yes, the patients and watchers get to complain their bills on YouTube. And also with the rest of the hospital personnel. But let's narrow all these into performing dependent and independent nursing interventions. In a hospital setting, you get to be more independent with decision making because let's be real, nephrologists aren't available all the time. The same case with physicians on duty because most likely there will be only one on duty for the whole hospital. So you'll be left alone all the time. When it comes to critical thinking and decision making skills, this is the best area to acquire them. In a dialysis center, there is always a standby physician on duty. So even at the start of your duty, you'll already feel relieved. So you feel safe. So if you get anxious easily in critical situations, then there is always an area for you. Third, flexibility. This is my most favorite part. You should become a dialysis nurse because whatever setting you're in, you always have a fixed day off on a Sunday and no graveyard shift. I'll start with the dialysis center that I am currently in. We only work five days a week because aside from the fixed Sunday off, we also get to have a second day off every week. When it comes to shift hours, it depends on the patient shifts and the facility hours. Like in our case, for example, we have an early third shift from 12 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. because our first shift starts early as 5.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Then second shift from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. There are also dialysis centers that allows their staffs to go home once there aren't any more patients around. So we most likely get to finish the shift as early as 6 hours. The earliest I had was 4 hours. No on-call, no overtime, not even a Sunday general cleaning. In a hospital setting, however, you strictly work for full 8 hours. And the shift hours are usually based on the hospital shift time. So if they are catering three shifts for their patients, usually the morning shift starts from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mid shift at 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then the third shift will be from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. The gap from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. will then be the on-call shift that is fairly assigned in rotation among staffs. Also, for Sunday, though it is a fixed day off, two on-call nurses are designated for the huge gap hours. Sunday is also the best day to schedule for a general cleaning for the whole staffs once a month. Moving on, aside from the fixed Sunday off and no graveyard shift, both settings can also have the advantage of having a holiday off, like in Christmas, New Year, Good Friday, and even summer vacation, if only COVID is not around. However, it still depends on the facility or hospital you are in if they are practicing it. The idea is to move the Sunday off to the holiday. Fourth, stability. 
you should become a dialysis nurse because you get extra pays from overtime and on-call duties. I've discussed this thoroughly from one of my previous videos, so I won't get into details anymore. You get to experience this in a hospital setting only. Averagely, you get 200 pesos per hour from an overtime duty and 1,200 for an on-call per patient for four hours dialysis session because there are some who have six hours dialysis session. I know it's not that big, but how much more those who are working in a dialysis center with no overtime and on-call duties. But still, you should become a dialysis nurse because the real deal is the endless opportunities abroad that even working in a dialysis center, you can land a job in U.S. With the number of dialysis centers in U.S. that are most likely five minutes apart from each other, there's a job for every dialysis nurse here in the Philippines, including those who are still aspiring to become one. The Vita, the Averum, and Fresenius are just the big names to mention. For aspiring dialysis nurses, I took my dialysis training in Global Nephro Training Center. I made sure to have enough knowledge and skills before embarking to the real dialysis world. And fortunate enough, I was assigned in my desired area in a hospital after the training. I even get to work with dialysis nurses who also came from the same training center. Their full course of hemodialysis nurse training program includes five modules for a period of 13 weeks or 60 days. The day offs are probably not included in the total number of days, so roughly it would be four months. As far as I could remember, way back 2015, there is always a one week rest period in between modules. For the pricing, it's a total of 18,000 pesos, with an additional of 400 pesos for the manual and certificates. It's cheaper to be honest compared to our time when it cost as much as 25,000 pesos that turned into some kind of a promo when you find a group of five, then you get a discount of 5,000 pesos off. So this year, it's 1,600 less than our time. The full training has a 45 CPD units, so back in our time, this was very handy when applying for a certification exam, which I'm going to discuss also after this topic. However, now that it's still COVID, I guess this is still waived. Each module completes in 15 days. The first module will be all about theoretical learning, so expect for pure lectures. And of course, pre and post quizzes are always part of that. You will be given a pretty big manual, then there's an exam after the module, which I got top two starting from the bottom, and we were a total of 17 enrollees that time. Also, before you proceed to the next module, you'll be given your GNTC uniform, and you'll have that first physical tour in their affiliated nephrology center and do the return demonstration of priming, happening all in one day. Fortunately, I have a video to help you ace that demo, and I'm just going to link the video below. For modules 2 to 4, this will be all about your clinical duties. As a note, not all of your classmates will be having their duties in the same nephrology center because some of them are just there to take the classes and continue their clinical duties in their hometown. On your first day, you'll be assigned to a preceptor, not entirely a one-on-one -on -one tandem since it will be more than one of you. The first month for module 2 will be entirely priming the machines and it depends on your preceptor if you'll move ahead to the next skill. Second month of module 3 will be cannulation and IJPC dressing. You'll be handed with forms that are needed to be complied. You have to be able to cannulate 20 patients and also 20 IJPC. So don't forget to take note everything you have cannulated someone or dress an IJPC since it's a requirement at the end of your training. So the following requirements needed for your enrollment are resume, updated PRC, updated BLS, IVT if applicable, HEPA profile, chest x-ray, COVID screening, then the available dates for the next training in the following areas are as follows. For Kagayan de Oro, the next schedule will be this coming May 2, August 1, and November 7. For Cebu, the batches are this March 7, June 6, and September 5. 
for Daba, it will be April 4, July 4, and October 3. And of course, for Manila, there will be more available dates from March 7, April 4, May 2, June 6, July 4, August 1, September 5, October 3, and November 7. As soon as you are done with the training, before you even try applying for CNN exam, get a job first in hospital, whether as a dialysis nurse or not, since experience is needed. So here's what to note when applying for the Certified Nephrology Nurse exam. Aside from my goal of working in a dialysis hospital setting, my other goal is also to get certified as a nephrology nurse because who doesn't want an extra title after the RN? Before it was CRN, but back in our time, it was then changed to CNN. I just find it cool and it also comes with a PVC ID, which is way even cooler. To be able to get information for incoming CNN exams in your areas, you can check out the RENA Facebook page. They also post the list of passers of the exam, so their Facebook page is pretty useful. All the requirements are as well posted in their page, but just to give you a heads up, you need to have the following. First, of course, a valid PRC ID. Second, a RENUP membership. You can apply for this on-site. You can either choose a one-year membership that comes with a paper ID card for 350 pesos or a three-year membership with the PVC card that costs for 950 pesos. This is also a requirement when applying for your CNN ID as soon as you pass the exam. So as a tip, just go for the one-year membership to save you money since the CNN ID is good for three years and the next time you'll be renewing your membership is the same year you'll be renewing your CNN ID as well. So that's 350 for three years then. Third, PNA card. I suggest if you have planned ahead to take the exam, apply for a PNA card early in the year since it will expire in December so you don't feel guilty buying it months or days before it expires. It's not the typical one-year expiration from the date you applied for. I think it costs around 400 pesos to 450 pesos. Fourth, renal nursing training certificates. So you'll need your GNTC training certificate here. Fifth, clinical experience. Three months is only required for those working in a hemodialysis area, but for those who are not, a six-month non-renal clinical experience will do. Submit an induction certificate from the unit head or certificate of employment. Six, payment for the exam is 550 pesos. And lastly, usually there's a seminar beforehand, so that's also an additional payment. For retakers, you need additional 12 CPD units. Then same requirements apply, just except for the fifth since you've submitted that already. For applications of CNN ID, as mentioned earlier, you need an active membership card, then your active PRC ID. A 2x2 two two picture in white background with name tag. The ID costs 500 pesos and then 200 pesos for the courier. You'll deposit this in the following and send all the requirements in renaph93 at gmail.com. For renewal, the same requirements applies. Active membership card and PRC ID, 2x2 two two picture in white background with name tag, 500 pesos for ID and 200 pesos for career. If you got delayed in renewing, you'll have a penalty of 50 pesos per year. As a note, before pandemic, they require 40 CPD units, which is the very reason why my ID renewal in 2019 got delayed since I needed to comply CPD first. But then COVID happened, so I got my ID just last year and the expiration is already this year. That's it. Hope you learned something from this video. If yes, don't forget to click like, leave a comment for video suggestions, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned as I take you with me in discovering nursing career. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.